The 1990s marked a major turning point for the American pickup truck. Not only did this decade solidify the popularity of luxury pickups that have all but taken over today's market, but the 1990s also brought performance pickups to the mainstream, and these have heavily influenced the insanity that we see going on right now in the pickup world. First up, the 90s brought us the fuel-sipping 1990-93 C1500 Chevy 454 SS. This big block truck truck would sprint to 60 in about 7.8 seconds, which was about as quick as the same year 5 liter V8 Camaro RS, so yeah. The Camaro was kind of slow, but this truck was a total sleeper and could still tow about 6,000 pounds. After that, GMC gave us the Ferrari beating 91 Cyclone equipped with a turbocharged 4.3 liter V6, making 280 horsepower and 360 foot pounds of torque. It did zero to 60 and get this 4.3 seconds, but only at a 500 pound payload capacity and GMC didn't recommend you tow anything. So although the Cyclone remained the quickest pickup for what seemed to be forever, and this is still one of my favorite vehicles of all time, it wasn't very useful as a pickup. Now you know Ford couldn't let GM outshine their best-selling F-150, so enter the 1993 SVT Lightning. This truck came out with 240 horsepower, or 10 more than the 454 SS, and blasted to 60 in 7.2 seconds, or about a half second slower than the same year Mustang GT. It handled well and could tow 5,000 pounds and this paved the way to what I believe to be the most iconic performance pickup truck of all time, the second generation SVT Lightning. This time Ford used the regular cab step side bed version of their 10th generation F-150 and a very special Eaton supercharged liquid to air intercooled 5.4 liter Triton V8. This engine had a forged rotating assembly and made 360 horsepower and 440 foot-pounds of torque. In 2001, SVT made some improvements by adding 373 gears, a 4.5-inch aluminum drive shaft, and increased airflow for a bump in power to 380 horsepower and 450 foot-pounds of torque, and it came with the beefy four-speed automatic transmission found in Ford's diesel trucks. The rear end was just about bulletproof. Its lowered stance, wide wheels, and performance suspension meant it could handle better than any pickup at the time, it covered 60 miles an hour in 5.2 seconds, ran a high 13 second quarter mile time which was pretty close to the same era LS1 Camaro or Trans Am, and in 2003 the Guinness Book of World Records certified the second generation Lightning as the fastest production pickup truck in the world with a top speed of 147 miles per hour. So even though the Cyclone was quicker, it topped out at 124 miles an hour, making the Lightning the faster truck until 2004 when they discontinued the Lightning and the SRT10 Ram pickup that literally needed a Viper V10 engine and a six-speed manual transmission went about five miles per hour faster. The Lightning looks amazing even today. They are just timeless. The sound of the engine and supercharger will make you forget you even have a radio. You can use it to haul plywood or tow a race car. And so I've bought my very first pickup truck and my very first Ford all in one shot. And after months of searching, here it is, crossed right off my bucket list, a 2002 Ford F-150 SVT Lightning in true blue metallic. I can't believe I'm saying this. I've wanted one of these things forever and now it's mine. So out of the 28,000 SVT Lightnings, the second generation made from 99 to 04, only 1130 were produced in this color and they were only sold in 2002, making this the rarest colored lightning there is. And in my opinion, one of the best looking. And in this video, we're gonna make it look even better. Okay, so we have a lot to do in this video and like a lot of my new car purchases, I've saved the complete inspection for us to do together. So we'll find out everything that this SVT Lightning needs. And then later on, I'll tell you guys how I beat five Five other guys to buying this truck. It had only been listed for a few hours. I had to drive to another state like almost immediately to buy it and I handed over full asking price because I thought it was such a good deal. And uh, we're gonna start off with something you guys may have noticed and this could really determine whether or not 
I got a good deal. After I drove it home, I found this. So the coolant is absolutely disgusting. And this happens on a lot of Fords. Look at that, it's so bad. You gotta flush them out all the time. Not only that, but it's all over the place. And I did beat on this on the highway. And my friend that was following me said, as soon as I laid into it, that there was a mist coming from this side of the truck and it even leaked down to the wheels. So in some cases that can be a blown head gasket pressurizing the cooling system, which would make the deal that I think I got on this truck not a good deal at all. So we're definitely gonna get into diagnosing that, but for right now, I've been driving this thing for like three days. I'm on cloud nine, I love it. I wanna keep this forever. I'm shopping for custom plates and long tube headers right now. I just wanna clean it up. I just wanna see this thing minted out, just enjoy it, even if it's just for a few more minutes before we find out if this thing has any major engine issues. I'm hoping it is something super minor, but with that, let's clean it up. Look at that sweet, sweet foam. All right, so I fully washed the Lightning using a super comfy microfiber mitt, and now I've rinsed it off, and before we use our clay mitt, we're just gonna give it a light mist with the car soap. And that is just for lubrication. So the clay mitt is pulling up any embedded contamination in the clear coat, and it's gonna make this super, super smooth like glass. Yeah, it's perfect. If you guys haven't tried one of these gigantic car drying towels, you don't know what you're missing here. These things are unreal. <laughs> Look at this. Who would have thought? How can we improve on drying a car? Well, just make the microfiber bigger. It's like the American way. And speaking of the American way, Avalon King is having a blowout 4th of July sale right now that I don't want you guys to miss out on. And I'll show you the results of ceramic coating the lightning in a minute. It looks amazing. But if you click on my link down below, you can get over 30% off the very complete Armor Shield 9 DIY ceramic coating kit. And the more you buy, the more you save. One kit is enough to coat a small to medium sized car. But if you want to coat every surface or you have a larger vehicle, Vehicle, I recommend buying two and if you do that during this sale not only are you gonna save over 30% But you're gonna get a free bottle of car shampoo and their awesome prep shampoo This is what I used in the foam cannon and it eliminates the need to spray rubbing alcohol on your car before coating it Because the prep shampoo removes any old wax or sealants from the clear coat while you wash These are normally $17 each and you're gonna get them for free during this sale which runs from July 1st to July 4th 2020 21. Now you can always get $25 off the complete DIY kit by using coupon code LEGIT25, but for this sale, all you need to do is click on my link in the description box or the comment section, and the discounted prices and the two free shampoos are automatically applied. I'll also leave you guys linked down below a very easy to follow four minute instructional video on how to ceramic coat every exterior surface of a car, but it's very, very simple. Just give your car a good wash, and if it's really dirty, use the clay mix and if you didn't use the prep shampoo, use some rubbing alcohol and water to remove any old wax from the surface. At this point, you're ready to coat and it's as easy as wiping it on, waiting a minute and wiping it off. That's it, you're done with that section. If you can wax a car, you can definitely ceramic coat a car and a little trick I use is to work on two sections at a time. So coat one part of the car, then coat a different part of the car and when you're done coating the second section, you can wipe off the first section. I've coated most of my fleet this way in just a couple of hours and because ceramic coating is super hydrophobic water and dirt just beads off keeping my cars cleaner for longer this also leaves a deep glossy finish to any painted surface and you can coat your glass your wheels so brake dust doesn't stick to them and trim it's one of the best trim restorers on the market you guys are gonna have a blast easily restoring trim and this is definitely instant gratification this coating lasts for years not months like wax and any Anyone can do it. Don't miss out on this sale. The next one is around winter time. And then when you're all done, you'll have something that looks like this. Wow. So the lightning is completely done. Every single surface on the exterior is ceramic coated. And I'm in love, guys. I am in love. Man, I wish you guys could see this in person. Follow me at Legit Street Cars on Instagram and Facebook. I'll be posting up a ton of really good quality pictures of the Lightning. And if I ever do local car meets around Chicago, I post up on there as well. If you guys wanna see this thing in person, it's truly stunning. I had never seen a true blue Lightning in person until I bought this one. And the color, 
the color is just on point. And some things that are rare are rare because they're not good. I don't know why they only made this for one year. It was replaced by Sonic Blue, which is gorgeous as well. But uh, yeah, they definitely should have kept this going. And just look at the condition of this paint. After the ceramic coating, it just brought it all out and it looks so, so perfect. I did do a couple little spot buffs here and there. Uh, so there are some scratches and whatnot, but overall, excellent, excellent condition. And I can't find any indications of prior paint work. So I don't think this thing has ever been wrecked or painted. The Carfax was good and let's get this outside. I gotta show you the metallic up close and then my happy days are gonna be over because we gotta, we gotta get to diagnosing. I'm gonna be smiling all day. I can't believe this is my lightning. I just still cannot believe that I own this right here. Something I'd been looking for forever and in one of the coolest colors. It's so, so nice. Oh man, just look at the paintwork. So like I said, I did a couple little spot buffs here and there. It's not perfect. You guys have seen my 30, 40 hour paint correction videos. Definitely did not do that. I just buffed out a little scuff right there, buffed out the headlights, but we have to get the front bumper painted eventually. It's scuffed down there. Someone had a front license plate on it at some point and there's a couple little scratches here and there. I'll let you guys nitpick it in the comments, but just look at this thing clean, 82,000 miles. Pretty sure it has the original paintwork. Look at the trim on this now. It's just shaved years off the look of this truck. Love the side pipes. The wheels are a little scuffed up. Uh, I think I may get chrome wheels for this. I love the factory chrome wheels that these came with. The 03, 04 version are my favorite. But at this point in my life, I could not be happier. Now, that moment may change because here in about five minutes, we're gonna be trying to figure out this coolant issue. I'm hoping it's just the reservoir or the cap or something stupid like that. Um, because this thing runs really good. I've been driving it for like three days and it feels like it has all of its power. It's not blowing any smoke out of the tailpipe. So those are all good signs that it's not a head gasket, but you never know. So let's go pressure test and see what's going on. Okay, hang on. This is a big time first. This is the first time I'm wrenching on a car in the legit street quarters. No lifts yet. They're coming in about a week. Um, but this is where I've situated the lightning. I think I'm gonna have one of the lifts here. I'm not really sure. There is plenty of room for a car to drive behind it. It looks a little weird on this angle. Um, but yeah, this is pretty cool, pretty cool. First time I'm working on anything and the first job we're gonna do requires a flat blade screwdriver. And while we work, while we figure out what's going on here, uh, I'm gonna pop off this Canon air filter and clean it and it's gotta dry for a little bit. So while we're doing everything else, this will be drying. So you guys are seeing it here first. This is the first screw I'm turning at the legit street quarters. There we go. Wow. This is big time people. Okay. It's a little bit hard to use a screwdriver when you're right-handed with your left hand while you're holding the camera with your other hand. This intake air temperature sensor is just kind of placed in there. It's not really secured. So that is no good. And let's get this guy out. This is one gigantic filter and one of the big reasons why this thing sounds so good. And it's got an aftermarket throttle body as well. So this thing has an aftermarket crank pulley, uh, a tune, a big throttle body and a big air filter. And that's it, uh, no headers. I think it has a Flowmaster muffler or some kind of muffler because it doesn't sound uh, totally stock, but uh, yeah, this is gross. Let's go clean it. My friend was cleaning out his parents' old garage and he found this. I think it's from the 90s, maybe, something like that. It's brand new though. So hopefully this stuff doesn't go bad. I doubt it, it's just cleaner. You can use soap and water as well on these style filters. You don't really actually need to spend the money on this stuff, but we have it, so why not? All right, so we're just going to spray a bunch of this on here and let it soak for about 10 minutes. If you have a flat filter, you can get to the other side better, but this should be good enough. And then we're just gonna be rinsing it with water. With the air filter out of the way, we can see some of the nastiness here from this tank spewing coolant or whatever you want to call this rust water. And uh, yeah, it got all over the place. This cap has been replaced. This isn't a Ford cap. Uh, 16 pounds, that sounds about right. And let's take a look here. Made in India. Okay, all right. And of course this thing is empty, so let's go fill it up and we'll see if we see any external leaks, but uh, I highly doubt we will. I could easily look this up online, but what is this guys? What is this thing under the hood? Is this something to do with the spare tire? Maybe, I don't know. Never owned a Ford F-150, let me know in the comments. Uh, we of course are gonna be using our organic milk water. 
I'm not even gonna bother wasting any coolant or anything in this because we have to flush this out like 50 times. All right, so it's it, we're already full. I'm going way past the fill line because I wanna see if there's any leaks in the tank. Oh, this stuff is so gross. Oh, it's burbling. Burble. All right, we have an adapter for this Ford Reservoir. And then we'll get the pressure tester on here. All right, here we go. Moment of truth, people. And we'll pressurize the system. It's supposed to run around max is 16 PSI. Bring it probably a little bit past that. There we go. And no major leaks. I don't hear anything coming out of the tank, any uh, hose fittings or anything like that. I'll let this sit for a couple minutes, but it is perfect so far. Okay, so after about 10 minutes, it hasn't dropped at all. So we don't have a coolant system leak, which is a good thing. And uh, to properly check for a blown head gasket, we'd need a CO2 detector. It's a kit you can buy with a fluid that changes colors. Uh, basically, if it detects any exhaust gases mixing into the, uh, the coolant system, that would indicate a blown head gasket. I don't have one of those kits right now, um, but I really don't think it's a blown head gasket. It doesn't blow out any smoke at all. Nothing comes out of the exhaust pipe. It's just kind of spewing in this area. Um, so the next step, would be the cap. This is an aftermarket cap made in India. It very well could be bad. Um, so if I have an adapter, we can test that, which this adapter is not gonna work. Let me, let me see what I can find. Okay, well, luckily the legit street quarters is situated in an area with a couple of speed shops and I borrowed an adapter. Click that on. Here we go, here we go. This should hold uh, 16 PSI. It should technically open right after 16. Uh, okay, so green is 17 to 19, yellow is 15 to 16. Oh, I can hear it still coming out actually. Yeah, let's try this again. Yeah, look at this. It immediately starts to drop and let's see how far down this will go. This could be a cap. This could be a cap. This could be a cap. <laughs> All right, so we're already in the nine to 11 range, which is no good. That would leak coolant. That would actually make a lot of sense because this thing can sit here and idle all day. You can feel the hoses and they'll be hard and it won't be leaking anything. But when you give it some throttle, it doesn't have to be boost pressure that's getting in there. It could just be a little bit more pressure in the cooling system because at wide open throttle, they definitely run higher than nine PSI and then it's leaking out. Okay, so what we have to do now is get a new cap and they probably have one at the auto parts store, um, but I'm kind of impatient. So I'm gonna go down the street and see if one of these other shops just has one laying around that I can test because a lot of these are all the same pretty much. They all screw on and off of many, many different makes and models. Oh yeah, it's leaking. All right, let's go get a cap. Okay, so I ended up just going to the auto parts store, have a brand spanking new cap and I'm bringing stuff over from the old garage and actually found the adapter. So I have one of those as well. So let's test the new one. Click, click. All right, here we go. That's nine, 11. 13, 14, I'm not seeing any drop here, no hissing noise. Let's bring it right to about 15, 16. Yeah, there we go, 16 and nothing. It's not dropping at all. Okay, so as to be expected, the new cap is good, uh, but we've definitely verified the old one is bad and that could be the entire issue. All right, so I'm gonna wash up the K&N. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, not cool. Wow, that's dirty. So we'll get this thing nice and sparkly clean. I gotta let it dry for a while, so we'll move on to some other stuff. And then we'll have to go for a test drive. I'll let you guys hear the awesome blower whine in the car. And let's just hope we don't have any coolant spewing out of that reservoir. Oh, and this other reservoir is for the water to air intercooler system. So if you guys have seen any of my E55 videos with the M113K, this is a very similar system. So it has the intercooler underneath the supercharger down there. Uh, it has the tank right here. And then we have the coolant pump down below. And right here is the heat exchanger. So 
this is stock. This is definitely something I want to upgrade. Uh, and I got to look into pumps as well, see if there's a better option for that. But if you think about it, this is basically an E55 pickup truck. It has the exact same size engine, the 5.4 liter. The E55 technically has a 5.4 as well, um, but this blower doesn't put out nearly as much as the E55 supercharger. That one is a little bit better. This is a 1.9 Eaton, and it definitely makes some power, but there's a lot of room for improvement, and they sell Whipple superchargers for these, and you can go just about as crazy as you want to. Something I noticed as soon as I got off the highway from buying this thing and I hit some Chicago city streets was there is a brutal knocking noise in the rear. And I had never driven one of these before I test drove this one and I felt that it was very bouncy. Now this is a performance truck with a performance suspension and it does handle pretty well, but I don't think this is normal. So I suspect something to do with maybe a leaf spring or a rear shock. So let's go take a look underneath. And although I would like to be able to tow with this, this just doesn't look pretty. So lightning guys, let me know if there's some kind of option, a cover or something I can do to make this look better. I, I, I don't know, this is, this is pretty bad. But it's all there, it'll tow 5,000 pounds. So a lighter trailer and a lighter car, no problem. And let's take a look here. So right off the bat, it looks like we have a new shock on this side, but not on this side. That is very strange. Why would they only replace one shock? This is clearly a new shock and these things can be like 20 or 30 bucks. So that's a little weird. All right, so what is this thing? It is an active performance shock. It's got a red polyurethane bushing up top. I don't know why they wouldn't replace these in pair. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, it's got no bushing on the bottom. Wow, how did I miss this? I got underneath this thing to look at the frame, but I wasn't really paying attention to shocks and I did not see that. Totally gone. So that is definitely the knocking noise. So replace your shocks and pairs, people. Considering how nice this truck is, I'm really surprised about this. That is very, very odd. Keep in mind the super bright LED light and my camera exaggerate everything. This is just a little bit of surface rust that would literally clean off. Um, but from looking at the history, this does seem to be mostly a Chicago truck. The guy I bought it from in Wisconsin said he bought it from the original owner in Chicago. And uh, I could tell they never drove it in the Chicago winters, trust me, this is nothing. All of this will clean up. The frame on this thing is in excellent condition. And uh, Lightning Guys, was there a larger muffler back here? It looks like, what are these, Flowmasters? This one of those little tiny shorty Flowmasters? Um, but I think they chopped out the original muffler. Here are the factory exhaust manifolds, and man, is this a nice one. Take a look at the frame and the suspension. So I've never owned my own pickup, but I've worked on many pickup trucks here in Chicago, and if they're used in the wintertime, they don't look anything like this. And don't worry, I won't be driving this in the snow at all. She will be preserved. And check this out. This stuff usually just kind of wipes right off. So yeah, it's literally just stained. The frame is absolutely perfect. And if I wanted to go nuts, I could clean this up even more, and maybe I will one day. Are you kidding me? It's got an old shock on the front left. What is going on? If this is a Chicago truck, if you guys know who owned this before, can you please just ask him why? Why didn't he replace all four shocks? They're so cheap. So I don't know if we can see any markings on this aftermarket crank pulley. Again, lightning guys, I'm calling on you guys a lot in this video. I could probably measure this, but what does this look like? Well, how much boost does it make with this pulley on here and the factory exhaust manifolds? Let me know in the comments. Yeah, we got a little seepage here, no big deal. We'll have to clean that up, monitor it, see where it's coming from. It's hard to tell, but the fuel filter looks pretty clean. These are about 10 bucks, so I'll probably just replace it anyway. And here at the back of the transmission, we definitely have an output shaft seal leak. So I will have to remove the drive shaft and replace that seal, no big deal. It's probably like eight bucks. Oh, and look at that, I totally missed this. This truck has aftermarket traction bars. I'm sure this thing is very traction challenged. I've basically been driving it in the rain, so I haven't had a chance to uh, give it some throttle from a dig. But uh, yeah, maybe these help. These probably help with some wheel hop as well. So that's kind of nice. So cool, thanks original owner. And of course it's raining once again. Something else I noticed was the steering has quite a bit of play. And you can see there is some play in this outer tie rod. And we also have some play on this inner joint as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and assume that every single one of these has probably this amount of play. And our Pittman arm boot is torn. It's actually like literally coming off right now. 
We'll leave that on there. Um, and I checked all the other joints and they definitely all have that same amount of play. So these are probably the original steering components with 82,000 miles. So that is pretty typical that they would need to be replaced. And what do we have here? Yeah, sway bar links as well. The ones in the rear were pretty dry rotted, so we'll get some new sway bar links. We'll probably just replace this entire bar here. We'll get a new idler as well. Um, and I wanted to do new tires, so we'll get an alignment at the same time and she will be all set. And we have a Bosch pump. I wonder if this is the same one from the E55. It looks pretty similar. So the airflow improvements they made in 2001 to give it that 20 horsepower bump in power were the mass airflow sensor and the intercooler. So they went with a 90 millimeter mass airflow sensor and they increased the efficiency of the intercooler. And I guess these had some leaking issues as well. So all of that was fixed uh, in 2001. Now this is supposedly the aftermarket throttle body. It looks aftermarket. I don't see any markings on it. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure what size this is, but it does still utilize the factory Ford bellow um, but uh, yeah it looks pretty big and these can make quite a difference wait a minute oh it does say something in there what does that say it says AccuFab this is an AccuFab throttle body so I checked my audio in between clips and in the last one I just realized that we have Excel ignition coils so I don't know if these actually add any real amount of horsepower but we know they've been replaced and they seem to be working well look at how nasty this brake fluid is so whoever owned this truck was not into swapping out brake fluid or coolant and then you run into a mess like this so those are definitely two inexpensive fluids you should be replacing and speaking of fluids I'm not taking any chances with the engine oil. So no joke, before I even found this Lightning, I ordered everything from Amsoil. So all new fluids and filters, I was already placing an order for one of my other cars. And I'm like, I'm buying a Lightning and this will force me to do it. So anytime I get a new car that I like, I swap out everything. So this is like my new car prep kit. Uh, so we're gonna be doing the oil change, a little bit of this gasoline additive. I have new brake fluid, of course. I have some coolant that I forgot at home. Uh, we have the transmission fluid, severe gear lube, um, and we're gonna do a trans filter. We're doing it all. Uh, about 240 bucks covered the entire Lightning, every single fluid and filter, and that is money well spent. So let's uh, swap out the engine oil. It doesn't look too bad, but I wanna be on the safe side. All right, so let's see if I can hold the camera and undo this drain plug and not spill all over the ground. This be the first oil spill at legit three quarters are you loose here we go here we go uh, i spilled i spilled my first spill my first spill oh that's not too bad not too bad at all oh now i gotta follow I gotta follow it so yeah i think this oil was due the guy before me who only owned the car for a year he said he did change the oil and he only drove this thing like a thousand miles. This is why I swap out pretty much all the fluids on anything I buy, because you never know. All right, watch this skill. Look at that, bullseye. Who needs funnels anyway? Who needs them? All right, our oil change is all done, and here is our freshly cleaned, dried, and oiled k and air filter. And I don't go too nuts with this oil because it can get on the mass airflow sensor and cause a false reading. A little bit goes a long way. I'll do a complete engine and engine bay detail in a future video, but I spiffed this up just a little bit so it matches the exterior of the truck. And so when we go on our test drive, we'll be able to tell if this stuff is spewing all over the place. So I've cleaned up uh, the majority of it. Everything is bone dry. So let's go beat on it. This is so exciting for so many reasons. First off, we're gonna find out if my engine's okay. And secondly, it's the first beautiful day that I'm driving this truck. Every other day, it's been raining. Uh, but I just wanna also show you that I found a blue towel that matches the paint color. And now this is gonna be the towel that kind of goes over my center console right here. So if I hop in here all dirty from being a mechanic, I don't destroy my nice interior. And uh, I have not been able to really feel this thing. Okay, yeah, it gets no traction whatsoever. Who would have thought, who would have thought? No weight in the back, big huge V8 with a root style blower. <laughs> it just spins them. Let's give it a little, little roller. <laughs> oh, it moves, man, it moves. So this is slightly modified. So it's probably like a low 13 second truck. 
And uh, I think with some more bolt-ons, long tube headers and stuff like that, I can get this into the 12s, which isn't bad for a 20 year old pickup truck that looks like this. I'd be totally happy with 12s. Oh, it runs so good. Trans is spot on. And uh, I didn't see any smoke. I didn't see anything. I'm not smelling anything either. And that would have been enough. That would have been enough to do it. So let's, let's just do one more for good measure and then we'll pop the hood and, and see what we got. All right, there's no one around. <laughs> I had to let out of it to hook up. This thing is awesome. This is so much fun. It sounds so good. I hope you guys can hear what this sounds like on the inside. All right, let's do one more roller. Spun them. <laughs> oh, I'm even more in love. I'm even more in love. All right, all right, hold on. I'm speaking too quickly here. Let's pull over. Let's find out what's going on under the hood. Hopefully, absolutely nothing. Back at home base, coolant temperature is perfect. The exhaust smells fine. Survey says, whoo! Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness, it's dry. It is dry. This is still nasty, but uh, it hasn't spewed all over the place. Oh, that's a good feeling. Lightning guys, our head gaskets, a normal failure point there. I'm sure they're MLS steel gaskets on this anyway. And I'm gonna venture to say this engine's totally stock, so yeah, I wouldn't think that's a big issue on these. But anyway, this is a good sign. And in the next lightning video, we are gonna fix all the mechanical issues, including a massive cooling system flush. That is gonna be pretty extreme. All right, so we fixed our coolant issue. We've changed the oil. We've cleaned up the air filter. We figured out everything that the lightning needs and ceramic coated the entire thing. And to finish this off, to top off my first pickup truck, you know I gotta get an American flag back here. This is something I've dreamed about since I was a little kid, having a pickup with an American flag. Now, a lot of the ones that I found that were pre-cut, they cut off a lot of the stars, which is something I definitely didn't want to do. So I had my guys at Chicago Auto Pros print one out for me, and we're gonna try and retain as many stars as possible. I've seen some of these flags uh, cut off you know, 10 or 20 stars, and I don't wanna do that, but I don't know if it's gonna be possible just because uh, of the shape of the glass. But we're gonna do our best, and they printed out two of these so we can play around with it and kinda see what happens. So what's great is you can actually see through this if you're inside the truck, but from the outside, it looks pretty solid. All right, so they've saved more stars than I've seen on most of these things being sold online. So not too bad. I feel so bad that we're cutting these out, but there's nothing we can do. And here it is, look at that. This looks so good and the middle window still moves back and forth. They tucked it in perfectly and we didn't lose that many stars. Obviously, we're not gonna have all the stripes either, but this is much better than pretty much all of the ones I found online and my guys at Chicago Auto Pros were able to do it custom in house. So I'll leave their information linked down below and that was the first one. <laughs> so they got another one. If you guys uh, wanna get this done, they got one in stock. So let's get this thing outside and I'll tell you guys how much I paid for it. Now that is America right there and it's no coincidence that I'm releasing this video around the 4th of July. So to all my fellow Americans out there, happy 4th. All right, so I'm gonna tell you this quick story and end this video all while sitting on the tailgate of my own pickup truck. So this all started just a few days ago. As some of you know, I work a normal job outside of YouTube and I get off really late at night, but I had been scouring the internet that day, just like every day for an SVT Lightning. And I found this one about an hour and a half away in Milwaukee and it was just listed like maybe two, three hours before I found the listing. So I got a hold of the guy and he said, you better hurry up because there are like five or six other guys on their way. And most of the time I'm like, yeah, sure. But he had this thing listed at $19,000 firm and if you guys haven't been looking into the lightning market you might think that's a total ripoff if you bought your lightning even a year ago or two years ago well pretty much every car is up about 20 30 percent right now but these things have gone up quite a bit so i get it you guys may have paid 12 13 grand five years ago it makes perfect sense right now that is not the case and these things are going for mid to high 20s if they're clean in a good color if they're a 2001 and up and they have low mileage like mine has so he described the condition of the truck it sounded good so 19 was a good deal so I told him what is the earliest I can be there he said like seven o'clock in the morning so 
I left at like five something, got to Milwaukee. I was the first guy there. There were other people on their way. It was a first come first serve deal. And I did inspect the truck, but I wasn't about to nitpick everything because I knew there were gonna be a bunch of guys right behind me with 19,000 ready to go. Now that this thing is cleaned up, I think I could probably sell it for 22, 23, 24, something like that. I know it may be hard to believe, but it is true. These things have just appreciated a lot and there's not too many of them left. They made 28,000. Many have been wrecked or destroyed or are rusted out and rotted out. It's hard to find a clean example like this one. So that is the story of my 2002 True Blue Metallic Ford F-150 SVT Lightning. There's a lot, a lot to say right there. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope you love this truck as much as I do. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. We're gonna have some truck content now and some really big news coming up on the channel soon that you guys are not going to want to miss. It's pretty much, I think, the biggest news now that I will be announcing to you guys. So give this video a thumbs up, share the video, subscribe if you're new. I already said that. And most importantly, have an awesome fourth. I'll catch all of you guys in the next video.